Welcome, and thanks for your interest in Komatsu products. Today we're going to cover how to properly conduct a pre-operation inspection for the Dash 11 excavator. Now the reason we do a pre-operation inspection is just to take a quick look at the machine and inspect it for any damage, excessive wear, or any leaks. Getting in the habit of doing this will go a long way towards maximizing the longevity and the production of the machine. Everything we cover today is also included in the operation and maintenance manual inside the cab. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, to begin, we're gonna start at the work equipment and then work our way back to the machine. So first thing, looking at the bucket, just take a look at the structure itself. Make sure you don't see any obvious signs of damage or anything. Get down, take a look at the teeth and the cutting edges. Work your way up to the pins and the linkage. What we're looking for here is to make sure that everything is receiving the proper amount of lubrication and that the keeper bolts are in place. From there, we'll go ahead and step back and start our visual inspection for our arm and our boom. Taking a look at our cylinders, our piping, and our brackets, just making sure that we don't see any obvious signs of leaks or any kind of damage. Which brings us down here to the boom cylinders where we can again check for proper amount of lubrication. Take a look at our hydraulic lines and our piping, just make sure we don't have any obvious signs of leaks or any kind of damage. Take a look at the top hat and swing circle. Take a step back, look underneath the machine to see if you see any signs of leaks. All right, so now we can go ahead and work our way around to the side of the machine. I'm going to go up on the upper structure. Before we do that, though, we'll go ahead and check our access points and our handrails and mirrors, just make sure everything's okay. When we're accessing the machine, too, always be sure to use proper mounting and dismounting techniques. Okay, so as we work our way to the very top of the machine, got a few checks we can do on our way there. The first step, you got the location of your batteries and your main battery disconnect switch. What you want to do is take a look at the battery connections and just make sure that they're looking okay and that there's no signs of excessive corrosion. The next step will be the location of the death tank, which you can tell by the blue cap. Okay, so as we continue to work our way up to the top of the machine, we got quite a few checks we can make from this position right here. First, we can take a look at the back side of the boom at the piping and the brackets, and also got the location of the lube bank for your boom and arm cylinders. Got the location of your fuel fill spot. These machines utilize ultra low sulfur diesel. From this position too, you got a really good view of the control valve where you can take a look at all the hydraulic lines and make sure that there's no signs of leaking. If we go all the way up to the top, go ahead and get down and take your swing motor check. And as we swing around to the back side of the cab, got the location of your standard pattern change valve where you can adjust the machine between ISO and backhoe configuration. Okay, so now that we've completed all those checks, we can go ahead and pop the hood and take a look at the engine. So now we got the hood up, the first thing that we'll do is scan across and just do a visual inspection, just making sure there's no debris, any damage, or any leaks. From here we can go ahead and do our engine oil check. Once you've completed those checks, that'll pretty much cover it from a daily operation standpoint. If you need more extensive information regarding the care and maintenance of the engine, please refer to the operation and maintenance manual. All right, so now that we're back down on the ground, we can continue with our ground level checks. First one we'll do is a visual inspection of the undercarriage. So just want to take a quick look at the idler and the shoes and rollers, the final drive and sprocket, and also just take a look at the track itself, make sure there's no signs of excessive sag. If everything looks okay here, we'll go ahead and pop open the doors to the cooler room. Again, sticking with visual checks here for air filter, making sure the latches are secure. Go ahead and take a look at your cooler itself, make sure that there's no excessive plugging or anything in the core. And then also you got one fluid level check to do in here for your engine coolant. Okay, so if everything looks good here, go ahead and continue our way around to the back side of the machine. First thing we're going to do is take a look at the rear view camera and just make sure that everything looks okay. Go ahead and take a look underneath the machine at the back side of the frame and also looking for any leaks. It's also a really good opportunity to take a look up at your undercovers and just make sure that there's no damage. If we're okay here, we'll just continue our way around to the pump room. Inside the pump room, mostly visual checks. Uh, looking at our lines, looking at our connections, making sure we don't see any obvious signs of leaking. A couple uh, fluid level checks we can make while we're in here. One is the windshield wiper fluid and also the location of the sight glass for the hydraulic fluid. Once we're finished here, we'll go ahead, step back, do the same undercarriage checks that we did on the other side of the machine. Work our way to the cab. Take a look at the cab exterior filter. As we make our way to the cab, 
Go ahead and do one more visual check of the cab structure itself, taking a look at the windows and the mirrors, just making sure everything's okay. Do one final check on your access points. If everything's okay here, that would conclude the pre-operation inspection and we can go operate.